We know that civilians are protected against attacks. However, they may lose their protection when they directly take part in hostilities. According to the ACRC, three elements must be fulfilled in order to conclude that a civilian has directly taken part in hostilities. The first element is that the action of the civilian must be likely to cause harm. The term likely includes acts that ultimately fail to cause harm. Such likely harm is twofold. It may consist first in any consequence adversely affecting the military operations or military capacity of a party to the conflict. The RCRC includes in that regard not only attacks against enemy personnel or goods, but also other types of actions, such as restricting or disturbing enemy deployment, interception of enemy communications, and transmission of targeting information for an attack. The likely harm caused by an action can also consist in any death, injury, or destruction of a person's or object protected against attacks, including civilians and civilian objects. The targeting of civilians by a civilian sniper or the bombardment of civilian areas may fall into that category. However, harm to civilian population, which would not consist in death, injury or destruction, are excluded from the definition. This is the case even if they result in a mistreatment of the civilian population and thus would be prohibited under IHLF carried out by armed forces, like the arrest and deportation of civilian populations. The second general requirement identified by the RCRC is that there is a direct causation between the act and the resulting harm. This means, according to the RCRC, that the harm in question must be brought about in one causal step. Acts which merely enable or enhance the capacity to cause harm are excluded from the definition of participation in hostilities. Those acts that fall under what may be called the general war effort are referred to as indirect participation. They include working in an armament factory or providing one party to the conflict with supplies and services outside of the context of a specific military operation. The RCRC clearly distinguishes the causal proximity of an act with the resulting harm from temporal and geographic proximity. A belligerent may use means of war which have delayed effects, such as mines or booby traps, or which are controlled remotely, such as unmanned aircraft. However, geographical or temporal proximity to the resulting harm does not constitute an autonomous criterion for determining whether the act amounts to direct participation in hostilities. It may only serve as an indicator of the direct causation between the act and the resulting harm. The RCRC also addresses two situations of interconnected acts. The first consists of several acts connected by an interrupted chain of causality that result in harming the adversary or the protected persons or goods. An example of this is the assembly and storage of an improvised explosive device. In this situation, only the final act may be considered to be a direct participation in hostilities. The other situation of interconnected acts concerns collective military operations that directly cause harm, such as attacks by unmanned aerial vehicles, which often employ civilian contractors. One operation may indeed involve several persons, Although acts of those persons do not amount to direct participation in hostilities if they are taken individually, the requirement of direct causation is satisfied if those acts constitute an integral part of one coordinated operation. 
The last and third criterion considered by the RCRC is the belligerent nexus. The act must be closely related to the hostilities and constitute an integral part of those hostilities. It must be performed in order to support a party to an armed conflict to the detriment of the other. This allows to distinguishing ordinary violence from violence linked to an armed conflict. Concerned by military realities, the RCRC provides that such a nexus must be objectively assessed in light of the design of the act, regardless of the intention of the individual.